I bought two of the biggest miniatures you can buy for science. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eon's Battle, and welcome back to Other Games April. Miniature war games are all about tiny, tiny little duders fighting it out in these giant epic wars across kitchen tables around the world. But the size of these miniatures has been steadily increasing. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? I don't really know. I can see some pretty good pros and cons both ways. I have mountains and mountains and mountains of little tiny miniatures, but I don't have much in the way of vehicles. But that changes today. I have two of the biggest vehicles that you can get for a miniature war game. And I definitely bought these for science. Not because I've never actually won a game of Star Wars Legion and I want to even the odds. Definitely to run this experiment. I have the AA-5 speeder truck for the Rebel Alliance, often known as the party bus because of its massive transport capacity. And I have the flyer known as the LAAT patrol ship for the Imperials, my favorite faction in Star Wars. And I'm gonna be painting up both of them and I'm gonna use every trick I know to paint them really, really nicely and really, really quickly. Speed paints, dry brushing, maybe even some oils. I don't know, maybe. Me and oils don't always get along, but it would be a good experiment to run. But which one first? I think the bus. I'm gonna follow the box art pretty closely. Cream colored armor, some gunmetal on all of the greeblings and gubbins, and some red chipped hot rod paint. Also, is that Nyin Yum? First, I have the ship all cleaned and prepped in sub-assemblies. This way, I can actually reach the inside. I primed everything gray. I usually prime everything black for maximum contrast. That works well on little minis, but for such huge models, I worry that it would be too dark. Most of this model is getting hit by the sun, so I want it very light, and the steps I plan to do later will introduce my shadows. And speaking of those shadows, I started with a dark gray through the airbrush. It's just a little darker than the primer, and I sprayed this on the bottom half of the inside walls and floor. Then a dry brushing to bring out all the Star Warsy greebling. Now the details look a lot more three-dimensional. And now it's time for some washes. I used a brown wash on everything. Over top of the gray, it turned everything a nice, dirty, oily, steely look that a little bit more white dry brushing perfected. With big ol' surfaces, it's all about adding more detail than what is actually there. All these steps add on top of one another to make flat surfaces look cool. The Rebels have a spot on their truck to hold their A280 blaster rifles, so I slapped some black speed paint over these, gave them a blue-gray dry brushing, and super glued them into position. Then I picked out some of the interior details, like these little tiles around the door and the pilot seats with a watery white base coat so it didn't completely cover the base coat underneath, then an orange speed paint glaze to tint them to perfection. The control panel has four identical computer screens, just like trucks in real life. I base coated these white, airbrushed some green speed paint over them, painted a white grid, and then placed on some dots. These are scanning for the objective markers from the game. And in just like 25 easy steps, the interior is looking spiffy. I've been painting for many hours and I have completed the interior of my A5 speeder. And I think I've stumbled upon the thing that makes vehicles so different from painting minis. Cause I love painting minis and I don't necessarily like painting vehicles, but I think I've cracked the code. So when I'm painting a normal mini, I'm in my character creation brain. Who is this character? What do they like to do? What sorts of things do they do in their world? And that helps me come up with my painting decisions of what I wanna do when I paint them. But when I'm painting a vehicle, I'm painting an environment. I have to go into like my terrain brain of what would I want my character to be interacting with in their environment. It's a completely different type of painting, but now that I'm thinking about it that way, I'm really, really starting to enjoy it. Now that I've painted the interior that nobody will ever see, it's time to paint the rest of the vehicle. Star Wars Legion vehicles have some really good engineering. The kit is in two halves, the interior and the exterior, and they can both be assembled separately for painting, then shoved together when complete. Games Workshop better be taking notes. These are better than your tanks. I base coated the armor with a warm white paint through my airbrush. Then I took my biggest dry brush and slapped, rubbed, and stippled white paint all over everything. This added a lot of subtle detail everywhere, and I base coated any of the mechanical doodads with gray speed paint. I want to bring out the most detail possible with the least effort, so speed paint over the white paint is a lot easier than base coating black and then working up through layers of gray. Now it's time to shove the armor onto the body and it all snaps right into place. I gave the model a satin varnish and let it cure overnight. This little truck is almost done. The only thing left to do is all of the dirt and panel lining. And every fiber of my being is telling me to make a wash. I'm so good at washes. I've done a million washes, but I feel like oils are the appropriate tool for this project. I'm not good at oils, but I think in the past I've always tried to go a little too fancy. 
I see something from like James Wapple or Marco Frisoni, and I try to get too fancy. So I can go right back to the basics. I also got some new oils. So in the past, I've used these cheapy, cheapy, cheap, like student grade oil paints. But now I have some oil paint made for scale models. These are Aberlung paints, and they say modeling oil color on the tin, so they should be the best thing to use. I made up two washes, a brown and a black. I put brown all over the cream colored armor and black over all the exposed metal bits. Well, it's an oily, sticky mess. Now I'm gonna give it about 10, 15 minutes so that the oil paint that's in the cracks has a little bit of time to set, and I'm gonna get to wiping. Makeup sponges are pretty much mandatory for this. I used about four to get the majority of the oil paint off. Then I took a pencil and marked out where I want the hot rod red stripes to go. Then I filled these areas in, but not completely. I used my dry brush and a stippling pattern to make uneven shapes that I slowly filled in until there was an appropriate amount of paint chips and scratches. I thought it was just a little too uniformly messy, so I airbrushed some burnt umber ink near the bottom of the truck where dirt would get kicked up, and then it was time to move on to the base. I base coated the base with the brown, then I made some patches of beige, red, and green, then a dry brushing a tan. Now to add some more variety to the base, I took some neon green and brown inks and stippled these on, thinning and blending them with water until my forest floor was really uneven. Then I wanted to try out some of those laser plants from Gamergrass, and I was surprised how good they look, although they're basically hidden under the party bus. The AA5 speeder truck is done and the oils actually worked. Oh, I'm so glad to finally have a successful oil project under my belt. But now that the truck is done, it's time to populate it with some duders. And what better way to hold some duders than Cobalt Keep Painting Hilts, today's sponsor. Cobalt Keep's painting hilts are the perfect thing to hold my minis for me while I paint. They keep my disgusting Cheeto fingers off the models. On the tops, they have a metal plate so that they can securely hold magnetized bases, such as Cobalt Keep bases, or anything else with a bit of poster tack or double stick tape. The handles are made of tough plastic, with detachable stands so you don't accidentally knock them over. And they come in a small and large size to suit whichever you prefer. Personally, I like the little ones. And for painting on the go, there is the Painting Hilt Pro, a large painting handle with a rechargeable light that makes painting anywhere a breeze. The painting hilts from Cobalt Keep are an excellent solution to keep your minis held safely and securely while you paint, and keeping everything neat and tidy on your desk. No more piles of loose minis and no more paint chipping. If you're interested in giving Cobalt Keep painting handles a try, you can follow the link in the description below and use our code EOB15 to get 15% off your order at checkouts. These guys are finished painted and now it's time to populate that tank. I put some super glue right onto their butts and put them into position and the truck came to life. These minis add context to the vehicle and they're the other half of the story being told. This kit comes with a clear windscreen and to glue it into place, I am using clear Elmer's glue. I have had bad experiences with super glue frosting clear plastic, so this is the safe choice. And it's non-toxic. You can eat this stuff. Although I don't recommend it. The AA5 speeder truck is done and it is glorious. It is definitely one of the biggest miniatures in my collection. I wish I could go back in time and tell eight-year-old Jay, it doesn't matter that your F-14 Tomcat miniature that you put together with hot glue didn't turn out because one day, you'll be able to do this. Now it's not perfect, and there's a couple of things that I did on this that I learned, and I wanna to try to do it differently on the LATLE gunship for the Imperials. Number one, primer. I used an airbrush primer, and it wasn't tough enough. I overhandled it, and I rubbed off just a little bit of paint. It's not too bad, I can easily fix it, but on the next one, I wanna try a rattle can primer, which should give me a much more bulletproof coating. And base coating the armor, I think I could have gone a little bit further to give the final result a little bit more contrast and a little bit more interest. But that's all very doable. I have one in the bag and one to go. You could say I'm half in the bag. Time to get to work. This mini is two things I don't paint a lot of, a vehicle and a flyer. I primed the outside of the ship with a black rattle can of Rust-Oleum Flat Black Primer and the inside with a gray airbrush primer. The inside should receive a lot less handling than the outside, so I'm not too worried about it. Then I base coated the guts with a tan paint and a dry brushing of white. Then I made up a wash of 50-50 brown speed paint and speed paint medium and mopped this on the inside. The wash did its job of shading every crack, but it did tint the whole thing a little too dark, so I dry brushed some more white on top. Now before I put them all together, I have to knock out these pilots. I'm not gonna be able to get my fingers in there later. I used a blue-black speed paint on their helmets and armor and a brown-black speed paint on their clothing, then a dry brushing of gray to edge highlight the armor. Then I painted their eyes with the green paint, highlighting it up to a dot of pure white, and I used that white paint to do the symbols on their heads. A little more super glue on their butts and they are now forever stuck to their gamer chairs and ready for piloting duty. Now I can glue it all together. It's pretty much essential whenever you're working on a big old vehicle to work in sub-assemblies, and I don't like to work in sub-assemblies. It always feels like whenever a miniature is just a pile of parts sitting on my desk that I'm not making any progress, but it is necessary so you can actually get in there and reach with all of your brushes and tools. But now that it's all assembled and the interior is done, now I feel like I can actually make some progress on this thing. I protected my pilots with some silly putty and the crew compartment with some paper towel. 
and then I got to base coating this sucker. Very light gray on top, dark gray on the bottom, a mid-tone gray in between, and I used this mid-tone gray to outline all the edges of the panels. Then I dry brushed the bejesus out of it. I used a white dry brush to pick out all the details, and stippling everywhere. It looks like it's just white, but when you look closely you really see all the little texture this adds to the otherwise flat boring panels. Now this is where the fun begins. I used some Imperial stencils from Home Hobby and Hyperspace to get the Imperial cogs on there, and it worked perfectly. Then I used my gray speed paint to pick out some pieces of the armor to be a slightly different shade of gray. All in all, there's probably about 50 shades of gray throughout this ship. This will make the final result more interesting. It's getting so close. All of the paints are on there. That's one thing I, I did wrong on the A5 speeder truck. I really should have painted those red stripes before putting on the oil wash. But this time I've got everything done. I want a nice gray oil wash and I don't own a gray oil paint, but I do own white and black. I mixed these two together and it did make a nice dark gray color. I worry that black would look unnatural, but this gray should shade all the cracks and recesses and darken the almost pure white color to a nice imperial gray. Then I began wiping. It took a lot more makeup sponges because of the weird shape of this transport, but with enough rubbing I got it all off, and I am dying to try out some oil paints on some terrain. And by the way, if you want a table full of new terrain every month, the EOB Patreon is the place to be. This month we have the Twisted Train Station, a devilish depot where danger lurks behind every corner. The oil paint is on there and it looks fantastic, but I did get a lot of paint off of this thing, which is not great. I think what happened is I only gave the varnish on this about an hour to dry, and so I think it wasn't properly cured. And this thing is such an irregular shape, I had to scrub a little bit harder, and I think that led to the paint coming off. Oil paint is magical, but it is not a magic bullet. In the immortal words of Jean-Luc Picard, things that are simple are not always easy. Now for the clear cockpit, and I don't think I want it to be completely clear. I used a Badger Minotaur Ghost Tint Red to tint the cockpit candy red. Then I used more clear Elmer's glue to fix it into position, permanently entombing these two little pilots into the ship. You can just barely see them when you look at it straight on. Now it's time for the base. I started with an earth colored base coat, then I used a cold brown and black to glaze on some shadows so the surface wasn't so even. Then a wash of brown to get in between all the grains of sand, which I dry brushed with a tan. For my Star Wars Legion Imperial bases, I go with a dark tan earth with gray rocks. And on this big old base, there are a lot of rocks, and I picked out every single one. And then a dry brushing of gray and light gray to finish them off. Then I stuck this sucker onto his stick. It has a nice intimidating wiggle to it. The L-A-A-T-L-E is almost done. I don't know how I feel about the cockpit. The red paint did obscure a lot of the interior that I worked so hard on, but that it does create a nice evil red eye to the spaceship. Now, I could call it done there, but I have some stormtroopers. These are 3D printed minis, the Airborne Patrol Crew Bundle from Skull Forge Studios, and I made rope out of floral wire. Also, wouldn't these make great earrings? I primed them black, base coated them white, then put some Games Workshop white contrast paint over them in one big wet coat. Despite the name, this is actually a light gray wash, which shades the armor nicely. After that, I dry brushed white paint over top to highlight the edges of the armor and bring it all back to white. Then I picked out all the little in-between parts of the armor with a black speed paint, including the guns, eyes, rope, and brow. And then these super troopers were ready to be glued on. I bent up the wire rope so it fit in between the ship's armor and door, and I super glued it into position. It's actually a friction fit into place on the bottom, and it took a bunch of tries to get this right. The sitting troopers were much simpler. Say it with me now, super glue on the butts. This bond isn't very strong, pinning would have been a good idea, but I'll leave them just like this until they inevitably snap off. These are both transports, which add a wonderful addition to gameplay, giving your squishy troopers some much needed protection and speed, and alters gameplay a lot. Huge models like these are interesting. I love how they look on the tabletop with miniatures swarming around them. They really make the miniature world feel bigger and more alive. But there are certainly some cons. Big cons. They're much more expensive and almost impossible to transport to and from games. They're harder to build and paint, and their size pushes the durability of plastic and superglue to its breaking points. I don't have high hopes for these little wings and antennas. And unlike model tanks and airplanes, which are meant just to be displayed, these are gaming pieces to be used and abused and will undoubtedly receive numerous bumps and scratches and heaven forbid, a drop, which will completely annihilate them. Big minis are absurd. So what is the one pro that offsets all of these numerous cons? Well, they're pretty rad. They're just awesome. You could say they're pretty wizard. In games, practicality takes a backseat to fun every time. And I am going to enjoy the spit out of fielding these huge suckas in my games of Tiny Soldiers. Thanks for watching.